ladies and gentlemen, we finally have both a price and a release date for Microsoft's upcoming folding wonder phone set to take on the Galaxy Z Fold 2, the Surface Duo. The phone will be launching September 10th for the low, low price of $1,400. Technically, it's $1,399, so $1 less than $1,400. Pre-orders should be opening very soon, and we finally have a full rundown of the specs on this device. Most of the rumors were true. What we've seen, what we thought seemed to be true. But we're going to run down these specs real quick and talk about that price. So we know that the Surface Duo has one big difference between it and the folding phones like the Mate X and the Z Fold 2 or the original Galaxy Fold. It has two screens and a hinge rather than a folding OLED. So what they're showing off here are two separate 5.6 inch OLED displays, 1800 by 1350 with a 4x3 aspect ratio, a little odd on a phone, but when you unfold it, you get an 8.1 inch total screen size, 2700 by 1800 with a 3x2 aspect ratio, which is an aspect ratio I actually really like. So that actually kind of does make sense. In terms of camera, they're showing us an 11 megapixel f2.0 camera probably not going to be anything to write home about. It's going to be able to record in 4K, low light modes, HDR. I can't imagine this thing's going to be a world beater when something like the Pixel 4a is you know, $350, but there's a camera there. There's one. You fold it around, point it at the back. There you go. In terms of internals, we're looking at the Snapdragon 855, 6 gigs of RAM, up to 256 gigabytes of storage, no 5G, no NFC, no wireless charging. It has a fingerprint scanner on the side, so no in-display fingerprint reader. We're looking at a 3,577 milliamp hour battery, which is quite a bit less than what is in the original Galaxy Fold, which was a 4380. Even still, they're promising all day battery life. We're gonna have to test that before we're going to be able to really say that's true. Microsoft has a tendency to really overestimate battery life on their devices. It looks like it's going to come with the bumper we saw in a lot of the pictures. It's also going to come with an 18 watt fast charger, which is not super fast, but I guess it's better than slow charging. The phone will be able to be purchased unlocked also through AT&T and T-Mobile. Now it's not going to support 5G either. That's another place where, look, the 855 that's in there, not going to support 5G. I don't know how big of a deal that is to everybody. Personally, not a big deal to me. Honestly, the lack of NFC, lack of wireless charging, no 5G, these things don't really bother me that much. But I think that when you look at them in terms of the price of the device, it is a little bit of a head scratcher for me. If you take this phone, the same hardware, but it's only one screen, this thing's what, like three or $400 tops? For that hardware, I mean, there's been phones with this hardware for in that price range. So I guess the question that we have to answer here is you add another screen and a hinge and the price goes up by a thousand dollars. You know, maybe R&D cost uh, more than I'm thinking it should have. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here. I think that in order to understand this device a bit better, you have to look at it in a different light. This thing has a mono speaker, you know, that's a small thing, but this is not a device that they're targeting the average consumer with. This is something that they're targeting enterprise. They're targeting business people, you know, so not necessarily the people that want to go out and take pictures and watch YouTube videos and all that kind of thing. Personally, I think, maybe that's a little bit of a missed a missed mark there you know i i don't know how many people would have bought this thing at eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars instead of 14. perhaps this is a situation where microsoft is thinking the people that would have bought this thing at 800 would buy it at nine a thousand fourteen hundred dollars the people that are going to want this sort of device the price isn't going to be a huge barrier for them and perhaps if it sells well enough to say hey there's a market for this. Maybe there's a cheaper one down the line since R&D costs should come down now that it's, it's, it's here, it's done. They can iterate on this. Certainly, I hope so because it's kind of a hard sell for me at $1,400 while you know, it looked like a, a great device for me at that price pretty hard to justify. And again, it's not because I think that the 855 is too slow. In fact, I think it's fine. I've got a OnePlus 7 Pro that runs the same chip and it, it, it's super fast. There's no problem. I personally, I've been saying for a long time that, uh, 
you know, mobile mobile hardware is outpacing the software by a good margin. We're not utilizing the power that we have. So it's not that. And again, it's not that NFC is a big deal to me. I, I pay, I use NFC on my watch. I don't use it on my phone. So I'm not going to miss these features. It's just that if you're going to charge $1,400, you need to be able to show something that makes it worth that. Look at the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It's it's actually going to be cheaper than this phone by a little more than by about a hundred dollars. It's got a faster chip. It's got one screen, but it's a better screen. It's got more cameras. It's got 5G. It's got NFC. It, it ticks so many more boxes, and it's cheaper. You know, it, it it becomes a difficult sell. But again, if you're targeting enterprise, you're targeting companies that want to hand these things out to their 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 higher up people, things like that you know, stock brokers, perhaps, they're clearly targeting a group that says, I don't care about the price. So pretty interesting stuff still. I'm still going to be watching to see what, what, what the reviewers that might get that thing for free, what they're going to think about it. Let me know what you guys think about this price in the comments below. Is this thing suddenly priced out of your range? Are you still looking forward to it? Are you still thinking about getting it? I'd love to know personally, because I'm way on the fence right now. So if you liked the video, give it a like dislike give it a dislike if you love the video a sub would be fantastic and until next time stay nerdy my friends